Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. To restore the carriage of the Bowley Watchmaker's lathe, I need to repair this 4mm by 0.6mm pitch thread on the feed screws. This is not a pitch available using stock change gears on my lathe, and according to the black book, 0.6mm pitch is used for very few standard threads. I can't find taps or dies available at this pitch anywhere. This is not a surprise, as Bowley lathes were made before most thread standardisation. The arithmetic is fairly straightforward. For a 0.6mm pitch, I would need a Z2 value on this table of 24. This means a change gear with 24 teeth. This is one of the Z change gears. Z1 is a 15 tooth belt pulley, and Z2 is a module 1 gear with a range of tooth counts for the different thread pitches. The stock gears are powdered metal, formed in a single process. Machining a direct copy would be quite complicated. I found this aluminium tooth belt pulley on eBay, which exactly matches the tooth size, spacing and overall diameter of one side of the change gear. This 24 tooth gear was also available on eBay as a part for radio controlled cars. It's a module 1 metric gear which matches the pitch of the other chains gears. The pressure angle isn't documented but it looks about right and the teeth appear to mesh smoothly with the stock gear. It's more than thick enough but it has this hole on one side which I'll have to take account of when I'm working out how to attach the two together. Both will need to be reduced in thickness and have the spigots and other features removed. To start with however, the spigots on both parts will be useful for work holding. A gear bodged together from such different materials isn't ideal, but better than nothing. The first operation was to reduce the gear thickness down to size. The cutting pressure slowed down the lathe quite a bit, and the carbide insert seemed to have a lot of trouble cutting. Based on the red hot chips coming off, it looks like the gear is hardened steel. I checked with a file in a high speed steel deburring tool, and neither could mark the gear's surface. Fortunately, I just had this cubic boron nitride insert delivered, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's spec for interrupted cuts, so it should be well suited to working on the gear teeth. I put a piece of leather under the chuck to prevent hardened steel chips from getting onto the lathe bed and causing wear. The insert worked great and had no trouble with the hardened steel. After the first few passes it became obvious that the gear is case hardened as the deeper material is much softer. With the gear turned down to size, the next step was to remove the spigot. In order to do this, I decided to turn a holding ring from this steel tube. The basic idea was to bore the inner diameter of the ring to match the outer diameter of the gear teeth. Once the ring is to size, I split it with a slotting saw so it can be squeezed tight around the part in a three-jaw chuck. This is the first real project to use the new sitting saw arbor I made in a recent video. See the link at the top right for how it was made.
welding ring worked great and turning down the spigot was straightforward. There was some noise as the tool passed through a threaded hole for a retaining screw. With the spigot removed and the hard blued surface of the steel turned away, I tried boring out the centre of the gear with a high speed steel drill. It didn't work at all, the hardening is too deep. I switched to a solid carbide twist drill to enlarge the hole. This worked fine, but I only have this drill in one size. I then used a carbide insert boring bar to remove the hardened material to the drill's diameter. With the hardened layer removed, the twist will have no problem finishing the hole and I brought it out to 11mm for the boring bar. The required diameter is 9mm so this leaves room for a bushing to provide a consistent smooth surface across both parts of the change gear. The steel gear was now turned to size and board, so the next step was the belt pulley, but when I chucked it in the lathe I found it went, ran way out of true. This would obviously cause serious problems with the belt tension if I ignored it, so I checked whether the chucking it between the teeth was viable. The test indicator showed the run-up was still pretty bad, so with all other options exhausted, I decided to turn up another holding ring from steel tube. With the pulley held in this steel ring, I could then turn down the spigot so it ran true relative to the teeth and chuck the part on the spigot for the remaining operations.
The next step was to reduce the end face diameter to fit into the hole in the face of the steel gear. The depth of the shoulder was matched to replicate the same space between the pulley and the gear that the stock change gears have. The final step before fixing the parts together was to drill and bore the centre hole to the same 11mm ID as the gear. I degreased the contact surfaces with acetone. I decided to try Loctite 638 to hold the parts together, though I have no experience with using it to attach such different metals. I carefully ensured that both contact faces and inner diameters were coated. The vice was tightened just enough to ensure the two parts were parallel while the retaining compound cured, and I avoided over tightening which might cause the aluminium to deform. The bond was left to cure overnight. I bored the inner diameter out a little further once the two parts were bonded, as there is inevitably a little run out between the two components. The target inner diameter isn't a critical dimension, as the bushing was to be turned to fit. With the bore keen and concentric, it was almost time to make the bushing. The boring bar had left a burr on the outer edge of the hole, which was extremely hard to remove. Regular deburring tools wouldn't cut it, so I set up a craft drill as a tool post grinder and got rid of the burr that way. I chose brass for the sleeve as it seems likely to be the lowest friction material I had to hand. I suspect phosphor bronze might be better but I have no experience of using it and don't have any.
I turned down the outer diameter to match the measured ID of the combined gear. But it needs to be a little clearance for the retaining compound, so a perfect fit isn't required. The steel portion still had a slight burr, so it catches slightly, but once it cleared that, the fit was about right. The final bore to dimension will be done once the bushing is fitted. The main reason for drilling the initial centre hole first was that it makes the parting operation easier. I parted off a length long enough to completely fill the depth of the hole in the part, though this is much longer than the final depth of the bushing. This was to ensure the bushing was firmly seated while the retaining compound cured. This time I used isopropyl alcohol as a degreaser. No need for the vise to hold the parts while curing this time as the bushing holds itself in place. Once again the Loctite was left to cure overnight. The next step was to bring the part down to size by parting off and removing the excess material. After removing the extra length of brass, I ensured the lining was still protruding a tenth of a millimetre from the steel face of the gear to ensure there was no contact between the steel and the bushing the gear runs on. To ensure I was parting off the correct width, I measured the correct position for the parting tool three times, including once directly checking against the size of one of the stock change gears. It's fortunate I checked because it wasn't right first time.
As soon as the tool breaks through the aluminium into the brass liner, the part starts to slip and wobble, though I didn't initially notice while I was taking the cut. This is because the brass isn't firmly bonded near the bottom of the hole, and the part is now largely being held in place by the parting tool and the groove it has cut in the brass. complete parting off the excess I needed to turn the part around, which meant I had to use the split parting ring around the teeth of the gear. I didn't have the part held tightly enough though. This was a lucky escape. The parting tool was beyond repair, and the waste brass badly mangled, but the part itself had very little damage. To avoid any more accidents, I turned the rest of the excess brass away the slow way, taking small passes. As with the opposite end, I made sure the end of the brass lining was slightly proud of the rest of the face. This twist drill brought the centre bore out to 8.5mm. Then I reamed it out to the final diameter of 9mm. I knocked the corners off the inner surface. and gave the surface a pass with the file, followed by a polish. All I had to do before trying it out was remove a few burrs from between the teeth. Here you can see me fitting the new gear alongside the small lead screw gear, which is intended for coarser thread pitches. Before a successful test, I switched over to the large lead screw gear, which is the correct one for the fine 0.6mm pitch I intended this change gear to cut.
So far, so good. Let's try out on some scrap bar stock. As usual, I applied some blue to make the scratch pass clearly visible. The thread pass looks clear, regular and even. And the pitch checks out. This project turned out to be a lot more complicated than I expected, but that's becoming quite a consistent story on this channel. I'm certain I wouldn't have been able to get here more quickly if I'd attempted to make the change gear from scratch though, but some of the tooling I need is going to be complicated to make. The next step in the Bowley restoration will be to use this change gear to make up the custom tap and die I need to repair the lead screw nuts and threads.